My name is Charles Izutuku Okafo. I'm a sad man today. You know, I was born here in Lagos. I had my primary education here in Lagos. I attended the prestigious St. Gregory's College here in Lagos. Before I set out to the University of Port Harcourt for my first degree, I returned to Lagos for the mandatory National Youth Service program here in Lagos and proceeded to the University of Lagos, Akoka, here in Lagos for my master's degree. I'm a sad man today. Those who know me physically and by reputation will tell you that I've had nothing to do with politics. I have never had cause to make political comments. I have always elected to play within my professional space and turf as career actor, filmmaker, and advocacy businessman. But today I am a sad man. Lagos has given me the latitude to accomplish so much in terms of my professional calling, living as a family man. My lovely wife and children live with me here in Lagos. My wife works here in Lagos. My children go to school here in Lagos. The best friends I have largely are in Lagos. And particularly from the southwestern part of Nigeria, Yorubas. Great friends who have become brothers to me. Classmates at St. Gregory's College a few from my primary school who have taken me in not just as classmates or friend but genuinely, sincerely as brother. I am a sad man to think that today in Lagos certain elements would want to put a wedge to the consummate harmony that exists between the Yoruba and the Igbos. The entire scenario that played out a couple of days virgin to a week or more that had to do with the peaceful protest I aligned with totally. There was reason to protest peacefully, to end mayhem, bloodshed, violence, intimidation orchestrated by the now proscribed Special Anti-Robbery Squad, SARS, and other concomitant consequences arising from this very mad experience as perpetrated by the now prescribed SARS. I have cause to speak and to lend my voice in saying that not only should SARS be prescribed and all those perpetrators brought to justice, but that you should also capitalize on this particular genuine, patriotic, non-partisan, non-tribal, non-ethnic move by the critical demographic of the Nigerian state, the youth, in speaking out for police reforms. The intentions were genuine and patriotic, only to wake up to see arson. Our beautiful Lagos, lined with 
beautiful infrastructural edifices. I believe that that historical noble city hall has been set alight. I believe that the Nigerian Ports Authority building on Marina. I believe that the governor's mother's house, along with ShopRite in Surulere, and many other places have been touched. I can say from here that responsible young men and women couldn't have done that. Not the same set of people I met when I joined in that peaceful protest over a week ago. But to be clear, to be clear, when we burn these critical edifices, we will only end up cutting our faces to spite our noses. Why? Whether we like it or not, we will begin to reach out to our meager treasury to begin to embark upon the duty of rehabilitating, reconstructing, and remaking these institutions. But profoundly, what has kept me awake all night is this very painful, erroneous, and dangerous allegation that certain elements of Igbo extraction perpetrated arson and other forms of violence against the Yorubans. It is not true. Not the Igbo that I am, not the Igbo that I know here in Lagos, who have built estates, who have built businesses, who have employed people across tribal lines, not the Igbo that have gone ahead to marry even into noble Yoruba families, not the Igbo that speak Yoruba as much as I do. You know, as an actor, I have starred in Yoruba films. I can name a Kowenjeli produced by Sunday Shurika. Omo Yako no. I recall that I did a road show for these films, working with my colleague Bookie Wright, who did KKK, Kodu, Kokbo, Kokbe. I will do a Southwestern road show for these films. I have worked with Jide Kosoko in Lagos here and in Enugu, a versatile actor. Do you know that Olu Jacobs, one of the best that we have in this country, on several occasions have, has worked with us in the East, playing Igwe in Igbo land, and he exhibited dexterity in terms of role interpretation, together with many other Yoruba season actors who have worked with us up and down this country on the Niger here in Lagos. I can't imagine that some people would want to put a wedge to what has bound us together over the years. I bleed today, but I want to plead that whoever is orchestrating this should please stop. God is not happy with you. We should chart the path, not only of peace, but of mutual coexistence. We are going through sobering trajectories at this time in our national life. Let nobody parade himself as a leader of Igbo youth anywhere in the world and make incinerating pronouncements, provocative pronouncements that are capable of setting us against the Yoruba people who have been great hosts to us for centuries. 
No Igbo man who has come to Lagos left Lagos unsuccessful, except those who deliberately orchestrated their own failure. The land of Lagos and Yoruba land in general have been of immense accomplishment to the Igbo man. The Igbo man is accommodating equally. The Igbo man is brotherly.